It's a 9900K. It is literal and figurative insanity. This is the fastest build in the building. Well, first up, what are we looking at? This is an Intel i9 9900K with 16 gigabytes of memory. It's been overclocked and there's nothing really super exotic going on here. I didn't do anything crazy. I don't have any like air conditioners pointed at this. And yet I was able to score top 50, top 100 pretty consistently on Firestrike and on Time Spy and all the, you know, 3D mark benchmarks with a basically almost stock configuration. I used a version of Windows that cuts out all the bloat, uh, configured Windows for message signal interrupts, did some other software optimization, killed some background processes, did some overclocking, I used Intel XTU 5.3 gigahertz on up to four cores, 5.1 gigahertz on up to eight cores. So it's really, it's like 5.3, 5.3, and the 5.3 on those other two cores, it's a little iffy. 5.2 is probably a little bit more stable. Mm, minus three to minus four on the AVX but this is an insanely fast system. Let's go through the parts list. First up, this is the Antec Torque. This is kind of a designer case. Well, I mean, obviously it's a show piece. It's a conversation piece. The Antec Torque case, it's got this two-tone sort of red and metallic gray. It's surprisingly well put together. My favorite thing about this case is that when the side panel glass is taken off, there's no flex in the case. It's not using the glass for structural support, which is not true of other cases that I've seen like this in terms of like how they were put together. So I would say that the glass is entirely optional. You don't have to use the glass if you don't want to. And in fact, I'm not gonna use the glass on the other side because you can hide the motherboard tray and do some wiring and stuff like that uh, under the glass. Believe it or not, this case does have options for mounting two and a half and three and a half inch drives. They'll mount on the opposite side of the case on the motherboard tray, and it gives you some pretty decent options for wiring. Now, I did opt to hook up uh, some RGB fans. Uh, Antec also sells this Prism 120A RGB kit that comes with a fan controller and five fans. That's a pretty good value because you don't have to mix and match, you don't really have to figure out anything. It's 520 millimeter fans that have dual rings of addressable, you know, LED, RGB LEDs. And uh, I really thought cable management in this case would be a little bit of a problem, but I found that there were channels at the front and sort of between the motherboard uh, tray and the decorative red that let me run the cables however I needed to in terms of routing both the RGB cables and the fan cables. Now, I'm using the Gigabyte Aorus Master Z390 motherboard, which has ample fan headers, but from a wiring and aesthetics standpoint, I found it was probably easier to use the, the fan controller. Now, the fan controller does go to the RGB header on the motherboard as well as a PWM header, so the motherboard can still control all the fans up to five hooked up to the fan controller. So I did that just for a little bit of cable management. This case does have front USB-C as well as front USB-3. Those are probably the ugliest cables in terms of, of routing. And then for cooling, I'm using the Fractal Celsius S24. It's a great 240 millimeter closed loop all-in-one cooler. It had no problem keeping up with my 9900K overclock. Although I do have a little bit of a cherry CPU. If you go to, uh, if you go, and it's a retail CPU, believe it or not. If you go to Silicon Lottery, you know, they're selling, you know, 5.1 gigahertz, 1.35 uh, AVX, you know, minus two or whatever. And that's in their top 15% of CPUs. I think this one is, is probably like top five or 10%. At least I haven't degraded it yet, fingers crossed. Uh, but I'm able to get pretty decent stability out of about 1.33 volts, 1.34 volts. I'm using an ADATA NVMe for storage and G-Skill Trident Z memory. Now for the first time, memory speed actually does make a little bit of a difference on the Intel side. Now I'm running a 4000 kit at the moment and that is the kit that I used for some of the records but in reality the 4000 megahertz kit is not the fastest because it's 2T because of the timings. Um, so I think probably something like the Flare X with 3200 megahertz or some of the newer Trident Z kits honestly would probably be a better choice than that. You don't, you don't need to go for 4,000 megahertz memory. That's still true on Intel. But because you've got eight cores to feed now instead of four or six, uh, you know, the days of 2400 or even 2666 are over, especially if you're building a super performance system like this. So you want to do, you probably do want to go for tight timings. You probably do want to up your, your uh, ring bus 
speed and your mesh voltage and your mesh speed and little tweaks like that. That's another way uh, that I was able to sort of edge out uh, other people on the on the top 100. But that said, you know, it's not, I didn't, this is not super exotic. This is just spending, spending some time tuning it, fooling around with it, that sort of thing. In terms of Linux support, Linux support on this platform is great. The worst thing is IOMMU because uh, Intel doesn't really support multiple uh, devices attached to CPU PCI Express lanes for IOMMU separation, but that's not really a big deal for you unless you're planning to run virtualization with more than one hardware pass-through graphics. Of course, you can use the iGPU, the integrated GPU from Intel, plus the added graphics card. But uh, the Aorus the Master Z390, this is, is probably the best Z390 motherboard in terms of overclocking power delivery platform. I mean, Gigabyte has really outdone themselves in this generation. They've sort of doubled down on build quality, on features, and everything that they've, they've been doing. They've been trying to improve their BIOS. And so I think that really is commendable that they're putting that much work into their product. They're not just, you know, I mean, it's like Z170, Z270, Z370, Z390. Those chipsets are a lot more closely related than Intel would really like to have us believe. And the reality is that uh, the, the main differences are power draw because we've gone from four cores to eight cores. And so you have to have a platform to support it. When 1151 was conceived, I don't think anybody thought that we would be dumping north of 200 watts through that socket. But this build, this is a build that anybody can do. We've also got an Antec, you know, high current gamer, 750 watt power supply, which honestly is a little overkill for this build, but would support adding a second graphics card. For the graphics card, we're using a Gigabyte 2080 Ti. That's one that level one bought. And the reason that we bought it is because it is significantly faster than the Founders Edition, generally of the 2080 Ti. Uh, the, re the reason that I say that it's significantly faster is because with the flashed BIOS, you've got the 22% uh, you know, uh, overclocking headroom, and the cooler on this really does not have any trouble keeping that card cool. So I did flash the BIOS, that's sort of another reason how we were able to do that, up the voltage a little bit. But you know, honestly, the, 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 the GPU never really got past 85. And it was never at 85 for very long. Now, granted, I did, I did crank up the fans, but basically it's okay. I've had a lot more headroom out of this, even in the Founders Edition 2080 Ti that has been flashed with the same BIOS. I just can't get as high. So I think that board partners are allowed to cherry pick the boards or Nvidia cherry picks them versus the Founders Edition because the Founders Edition card that we have really, it doesn't overclock much at all even with, the, uh, even with the, the power increase, even with upgrading the fans. And I'm not sure if that's because the cooler is marginal or just it's you know barely the A bin. I'm not real sure, still digging into that. But yeah, 2080 Ti that we bought because we thought it was the best deal for what you get. And uh, it works really well. There's a, I think there's a separate review on the 2080 Ti. Uh, the, the, one of the middle fan spins a different way to cut down on turbulence and that does actually seem to help the cooling quite a bit on this three fan design. It is a two and a half slot card, it's not a two slot card, but uh, you know, even in this case, this case breathes really well. This, this, this case breathes shockingly well, honestly. I wasn't sure if the VRMs would get enough airflow because I mean, we, we've really only got the three fans in the front and the two fans from the, the fractal all-in-one in the top, but the VRM, it's honestly one of the best temperatures that I've had on an ATX case. This is a, you know, the full fin stack design, but Works really well. One recommendation if you do decide to get this case, go with a motherboard that has a built-in I.O. shield. There's no provisions on this case for any kind of I.O. shield, so you'll want to go with a motherboard that has a built-in I.O. shield. Also, surprisingly, it, it would seem like there's enough room in here for a custom loop cooler, but there's not really any kind of mounting accessories or, or anything that I saw typically in a case like this for a custom loop um, all-in-one cooler. I myself, I'm not, I'm not yet into custom loop coolers. That might that may change, especially with CPUs like the 9900K that will do a lot better if you have absolutely insane and ridiculous cooling. But uh, I found the 240 millimeter all-in-one sufficient for my needs because I personally, I don't believe that pushing the 9900K past about 5.1 gigahertz for 24 seven, set it and forget its stability is anything that anybody really should do, even with a closed loop 
all in one cooler. I know that some, I mean, that's not gonna necessarily be universally true, but I think that's true for a lot of people out there. But overall, like it or lump it, the 9900K is currently the single thread performance crown and offers the best gaming performance. That said, if this case, if this build were a D&D character, we would not have any points in the uh, value for dollar column. In fact, that we've probably figured out some way to exploit the system and have negative points in the value per dollar system. Like remember the old Fallout 4 bug where, I think it was Fallout New Vegas, one of the release version on the, on the thing you could like take away points that you already had. And so you could be like minus five to charisma and get a few more points in intelligence. Just like me. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, don't, I try. Building this thing was a lot of fun. I kind of want to build a thread ripper system in this now because this actually went really well. Put a 360 millimeter radiator in the front, although you could put one in the top as well uh, with a you know the 2950X and all the accoutrement and uh, see how that how that build goes. Um, it is uh, the, the cable management. I wish there was more stuff for cable management. I wish there was like a shroud or something like in the front area because the way that I've done it is I've just stuffed all the unsightly stuff down into this in this front corner in hopes that no one notices. But you know, by and large, it, it works really well. I can see a custom loop cooler in this thing also looking, looking pretty swanky. Now, of course, if you are on a budget, um, you know, cardboard box works fine. You don't need RGB. But if you want to build a showpiece and you don't want to invest a crazy amount of time doing super custom everything, you should probably look at the Antec Torque. It's one of the nicer cases that I've seen in terms of like it being a custom case, but it's not got some Achilles heel, like terrible cooling, or that it uses the tempered glass as a structural support, or you know something like that. So if you want something that looks like this without really compromising on anything, this is this is a, probably a pretty good choice. Uh, although I guess you're compromising a little bit on terms of like if you wanted to have a ton of three and a half inch hard drives or a ton of two and a half inch hard drives or, or anything like that. You can do two and two or I think three and one, something like that. Uh, but there are a lot of other options that are not you know quote unquote in the manual that are places you could mount two and a half inch and three and a half inch SSDs without really any trouble. And it does look really cool. So this is probably gonna be our benchmark build at level one. Anytime we have to do 9900K testing or 2080 Ti, probably gonna to try to keep this one together as much as we can, because this is the fastest system that we have right now. Maybe I'll do some game streaming or something like that with it. I don't know. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out. And uh, that's been the Antec Torque review, but also a nice build with Gigabyte components, as it turns out. You know, Gigabyte makes power supplies too. I've got one, I haven't tested it yet, but that's on my to-do list, 750 watts. So yeah, I think uh, so far it's, it's, gone, it's gone pretty well. Anyway, I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the level one forums. So if you build a system like this, let us know.